Deciphering the numerous popular handgun sales reports might be a bit of a task. The sources used to determine the outcomes, and these sources frequently draw from a small pool of data. We have the answers to your questions. If you've been curious about 2023 firearm trends, what people think is the newest hottest thing or the timeless classics. The top five handguns in popularity are listed below based on data gathered from multiple sources. Believe we made a mistake? Post your ideas in the comments section. Here are top 10 best-selling handguns 2024. Number 10. The Ruger Mark IV. The Ruger Mark IV is a .22 handgun with a legendary appearance, an unusual beginning, and a very high profile. The most well-known firearms are from the lineage that started with the 1949 Ruger Standard, which Bill Ruger unveiled and continues with the Mark IV. The simplicity of the Mark IV pistols is what makes them so beautiful. Bill Ruger based the Ruger Mark 4.22 fundamental design on the originals, which were modeled after the Nambu. It's a semi-automatic rifle that operates on recoil and has a reciprocating bolt assembly stored inside a tubular receiver. Its accurate and dependable design has withstood the test of time because of its simplicity. Given that, that is a remarkable accomplishment. The dirtiest and least dependable ammo you could load into a contemporary weapon is often 22 lar. Number 9. Springfield Arsenal Hellcat We believe Springfield Armory would agree that the Hellcat is the solution since SIG revolutionized what a concealed carry handgun could be with the release of their P365. Like the Hellion, the Springfield Armory Hellcat is an imported gun produced by a Croatian manufacturer. Since roughly 2003, Springfield has been releasing weapons that they import from HS Product in Croatia. Initially, they introduced the XD line of handguns, which offered a respectable quality handgun at an affordable price. Number 8. Beretta 92FS Full size, semi automatic 9x19M DA SA handgun is the Beretta 92FS. I also happen to have a rather extensive history with this particular handgun. It was the first handgun I ever bought, and it was the closest thing to the sidearm issued to service personnel 30 years ago. It is the same serial number as the Beretta that you see in these photos. I've fired a good number of rounds through that gun, and on my first and only deployment to Iraq, I was also given a Beretta to carry. Military men frequently have a negative opinion of the Beretta M9-92. You can't discuss anything for five minutes with an SF weapon surgeon without having the subject of broken locking blocks brought up. Officers of all stripes will blame the large 9mm for the poor marksmanship of the infantrymen, who will tell you what a piece of garbage their M9 was. Number 7. M&P by Smith & Wesson The American firm Smith & Wesson debuted the polymer-framed, short-recoil-driven, locked breech semi-automatic pistol known as the MNP, military and police. In the summer of 2005, a Browning-style locking mechanism is employed. Although the MNP is aimed at law enforcement organizations, it is also extensively accessible in the commercial market. The Zytel polymer pistol frame is strengthened by a stainless steel chassis. The pistol has a 108 degrees grip angle and four detachable interchangeable grip inserts, stainless steel, used to make the slide and barrel, is treated with a patented nitriding method known as melumet once it has hardened. Number 6. GX4 Taurus Taurus hasn't always been associated with dependability and superior performance, but the company has made efforts over the years to change that by making pistols accessible to a wider audience. Numerous models of compact handguns that claim to be small enough for concealed carry can be found if you search the market. To put it simply, the GX4 is an incredibly small and extremely discreet carry gun. Did I also mention that it's reasonably priced? The striker fired GX4 is 4.4 inches tall and measures 5.8 inches with the small backstrap and 6.05 inches with the large. You should anticipate weighing roughly 18.5 ounces but this pistol shines when it comes to width. It is tiny just 1.08 inches, but it can hold 11 rounds. For a trim and slender model, not too bad. Number 5. The SIG Sauer P365 SIG Sauer manufactures the P365, a small semi-automatic pistol with a striker that is designed for daily carry. 
It comes with a stainless steel frame with a polymer grip module, two 10-round magazines, one flush fit and the other with an extended finger tab, and Trigium XRAA 3-day slash night sights. It uses offset double stat magazines and is rated for plus P, higher pressure, ammunition. It is mainly chambered in 9X19M Parabellum. A version with a 380 ACP chamber was released in February 2022. In Newington, New Hampshire, the P365, which took the place of the P290RS, is manufactured. It was the best-selling handgun in the U.S. in both 2018 and 2019. Number 4. CZ-75 The design was innovative for its time, and as no international patents were preventing the pistol from being leaked to the public, anyone was able to create a CZ-75. One of the handguns that is imitated the most worldwide is the CZ-75. China, Italy, Israel, Turkey, and many more countries made their replicas of the renowned handgun. If you're in the market for a CZ-75 these days, you have a lot of options to select from. Or if you're like me, you can still purchase the original from CZ directly. Number 3. Colt Python I had not recognized how much more of an impact this wheel gun had had in my formative years. I had a Laramie cap gun as a child that was fashioned after the Python. A Crossman TO2 pellet rifle, which is still in existence, was modeled after a Python when I was in my teens. With the Half-Life series of PC games, my preferred method of eliminating extraterrestrial enemies was the Magnum, a well-grooved 6-inch Python. More recently, the Python served as the hero gun for Rick Grimes of AMC's The Walking Dead series from the first to the last season. I had no idea for a very long time which rifle all of these sources were honoring. After all these years, I had never really seen one. I never got the chance to even hold one, much less pull the trigger. Though I was aware that they were outside of my reality, I did not accept their existence. Not until I expanded more and the collector market took off, which was about 10 years ago. Then I would see entire collections in different barrel lengths, either straight up polished or polished and blued. Usually these had price tags that were locked inside display cabinets and started at about $3,000. It seemed as though requesting to hold one required giving them your credit card. Still unattainable for eternity. Number 2. Glock 17 The Glock G17 is a very reasonably priced full-sized 9mm handgun that is dependable and reasonably ergonomic. You may also personalize your G17 to your exact specifications, thanks to the extensive selection of aftermarket parts and accessories that are available. Optical plate technique that can handle almost all micro red dots. The purpose of the dual recoil assembly is to lessen recoil and lengthen the gun's lifespan has a reversible magazine release attached. System of modular backstrap. Includes a compact magazine loader, three 17 round magazines, and a small tool for attaching the plates and optics. Number one, Canik Tip 9 step. After handling the Canik TP 9SF, it's difficult to find a valid objection about the weapon. It's a well-made handgun that is enjoyable to shoot and shoots well. The TP9SF has numerous excellent qualities, the most notable of which being its trigger and the kind of dependability you would anticipate from a concealed carry gun. And not just that, however, the Canik is ideal for anyone on a tight budget. This isn't simply another cheap rifle that sacrifices quality or safety to save money. The TP9SF standard and the 1 series are identical firearms. It just has fewer pre-installed accessories, but an even more alluring price. No, I don't believe it can take the place of more advanced duty-level firearms. However, the Canik TP9SF is a very good alternative for a low-cost handgun that performs far better than its class. This means that I prefer a Glock, SIG, CZ, or HNK over a Canik if I have a choice in a duty gun. But the Canik is the best option if I'm on a tight budget. If I want a pistol that I won't be too concerned about mishandling, truck, ranch, etc., or if someone is looking for a first gun to simply get started, and they're not quite sure which gun that they'd like to end up with. Do you like it? Kindly give your valuable response in our comment section below, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more interesting and informative videos.